Hello, uh, my name is Carl Nigi, and I am the owner operator of a business called Overcoming Dyslexia, ADD, ADHD and Learning Disabilities in Ottawa, Canada. I'm what's known as a Davis facilitator and I get my job title from the gentleman that developed our programs and his name is Ron Davis. I've talked about what I do and Ron in other videos so please go and look at those if you'd like to find out more. What I'd like to talk about today is really a continuation of the video that I made last time and the last video that I made was uh, number six and it was titled Dyslexia, Why Words Like The, Enough and Is Are Such a Problem. Now these words are a problem for dyslexics as I described in the last video for uh, really because they are words that cannot be pictured. There is no such thing as a the. And I talked about that in depth in the last video. So go and check that out before this one because this one won't make as much sense if you haven't watched the, the previous video. What I'd like to talk about today is really how to identify if somebody is having a problem with trigger words. And what I've noticed myself within my own dyslexia and how it worked for me, and also the 10 years that I've been working with people with dyslexia and ADD, ADHD, and other learning disabilities, and how it really shows up in four major ways. So this is not a diagnostic tool. You're not going to be able to diagnose that somebody's dyslexic from what I'm about to share. It's really a layman's way or a common sense way of looking at this problem. If you're seeing these things happening with either within yourself or with a child, then Davis can help. Basically, that's the bottom line here. I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you're either going to be one of three groups of people. You're either going to be an educator, a professional looking at Davis saying, what is this Davis stuff and how does it work? Um, great. If that's the case, please go and train as a Davis facilitator because you are very much needed. The other way you could be looking at this is for, as an adult yourself, uh, like I was in my 40s, trying to understand my dyslexia again for another uh, for another time, another another sort of pass if you like and see what's new see what's different um so you might be that type of person but who this video is probably more likely to appeal to is the mother or father who has a child who's already been diagnosed with either a learning disability or add or adhd or a language problem of some kind and you're looking at this and saying well what's really going on here and how can i really understand it and what's going to work the best. So if you see these things that I'm about to discuss coming up, then, um, and you're seeing it with your child and you're observing it in them, then basically Davis can help. So this um, is actually, again, a rather complicated area to talk about because it's some people who are looking at uh, dyslexia and ADD and ADHD uh, these things that I'm about to talk about are happening internally. They're not always observational. You can't always observe somebody else doing them. So I'm going to talk about the ones you can observe uh, the best I can and then also explain the ones you can't observe uh, the best I can from my own experience. So really there are four areas that um, the small abstract words uh, are a problem. Now on the Davis program we call these trigger words because they trigger confusion. Uh, as we read more and more of these trigger words, what happens is the confusion builds and builds and builds, and then eventually the dyslexic person pops, they disorient, or the escape valve, as I've talked about in other videos, the, uh, they disorient, and when they're disoriented, um, it doesn't work for these trigger words. It works for other things, but it doesn't work for these trigger words. So I've ex again, I've explained that in other videos, so uh, you may want to go and watch those uh, before finishing this one. But it shows up in these four areas and the four areas that uh, trigger words are a problem for a dyslexic person. Uh, first of all, in speech. They show up in speech, in reading, in writing, so in spelling. Also, they show up in the thinking processes of dyslexic people or um, people who are ADD and ADHD. And it's uh, this is the hardest one to explain. I used to can think of it as the sort of the click whir that would happen in my brain where I'd be trying to formulate a sentence and I, my brain would just go into this brain freeze. And it would be almost like a robot 
or a machine that just got stuck and it, I had expressed it as this click whir, click whir. And I was like, kind of feeling. And it also led to quite a lot of embarrassment and therefore shame. And you can see it in kids when they're trying to express themselves, they sort of stumble on what they're trying to say. And that's the other way it shows up within the thinking and then also within speech. And this is where the two get combined together. So in speech, someone very often might stumble over words. Um, and one kid uh, expressed it as saying, well, it's almost like I've got too much tongue for my mouth sometimes. And this boy was, I think he was about 10 years old. And we were sort of, we were actually joking about it as two dyslexics. And he went, yeah, it's like I've got too much tongue for my mouth sometimes. And I thought that was a lovely way of expressing it. He would just sort of get caught on his tongue and then he'd trip up on these words and he'd say a trigger word. Um, the other way it shows up is um, really with speech is what I call double tapping on trigger words. And this is the way it really shows up the most. Um, I stumbled on this. I'm not sure this is actually part of our Davis training, but what I realized was trigger words very much is, but the double tapping or what I call double tapping is sort of a tap, 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 tap on these trigger words. And I noticed about after about four years after I'd uh, done a Davis program, I was meeting dyslexic people. I was listening to the radio and I suddenly noticed that this radio broadcaster was double tapping on these words. He was saying the, the, when, when, I, I, me, me. And I began to see it in the parents of clients, adults, um, and also in my clients. And I thought, what's going on? And when I sort of really tuned into what was going on, what I realized was that clients were always tripping up on these small, short, connecting words. And it was like a stammer. They'd be talking and they'd suddenly say, when, 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 or me, me. Uh, and a good example of this is a little boy I was working with last week. And he basically, we were having a bit of fun. It was on a break. We were joking about something. And I said a joke and he was laughing and you could feel both of our energies going up. He was beginning to enjoy it and he sort of carried on the joke and he got sort of more and more animated and he was sort of wriggling in his seat and he was trying to explain something. It was like a wave cresting. He'd sort of express himself, express himself, but then he got stuck and this click were of not being able to think with trigger words and therefore not being able to string a sentence together meant that it sort of just ground to a halt and died. And what he ended up doing was saying, when, 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 I, 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 and he'd double tap on these trigger words. Now, of course, for him, it was just him and me alone. I could see that he was becoming frustrated. He began to become embarrassed. You could see his face was flushing and he began to sort of feel awkward. And to cut a long story short, we, we dealt with it and he felt okay. But it was a prime example. I thought about it uh, this week when I was working with a client. So I thought I've got to talk about this as a video topic. So that's very often how it shows up, this double tapping. And I've got so good at listening to it that I can actually hear it on the radio when you're interviewing somebody. And where it shows up quite quickly is it's not nerves. It's not somebody like in front of a camera like this. Someone becomes a bit nervous and they may stumble over their speech or they may double tap on a word. <clears throat> when it's happening with a, um, an experienced newscaster and they're double tapping on trigger words again and again and again and again, and they've got 10 years on the job, it's not nerves. It's the double tapping on trigger words. What's interesting about uh, radio broadcasters is in order to do that job you have a very finite amount of time you don't have much time to get the information out so you have to speak very quickly and as they speak very quickly their thoughts are going quicker almost than their mouth can produce the sounds of the words so they double tap or they get confused and then double tap on them it's a really subtle one, and I'm not sure how a language specialist would describe it. Maybe they'd describe it as a stammer. But what I've noticed is, is it's always on trigger words. It's never on a word like boat, cat, dog, disingenuous, um, girlfriend, boyfriend, house. 
boat, nothing, not a real object is always trigger words. I just happen to know all 230 of them, so I can spot it every time. So that's the way it shows up in speech. And I often find myself talking to people in stores or on the bus or around and about or on the phone when I'm talking to a parent of somebody who's uh, a child, They've, they're trying to inquire about the program and I suddenly realize, oh, this person's double tapping on trigger words. I'm actually talking to a dyslexic person. When that dropped, uh, when I first realized that as a facilitator, I'd only been a facilitator a few years, I suddenly also realized that I had stopped doing it to the extent that I used to. Uh, I'd still do it from time to time, and if you watch some of these videos closely, you'll probably see me doing it. And I don't mind, I'm happy to sort of out myself. So that's the first way it shows up in speech can also, when it happens, for little ones, be very embarrassing and very shaming. So what I've found is in assessments, the parents will often try and sort of intervene and end the sentence for the child um, and, and sort of cover it up. And I've, so if you find yourself doing that, you realize, oh, this kid actually can't express their ideas. That's the trigger words working backwards. Um, so how else does it show up? Well, the next area it shows up really, really is in reading. Um, so literacy is really a three part process. And to really understand how it's showing up in reading is that we have to be able to read the words. We have to be able to understand what those words are. We have to be able to think with those words. And this is what people call comprehension. But comprehension is really being able to digest the words, think with them, put them into contents. Uh, if there's a story uh, um, like Tom Sawyer, what's happening in that story? If it's information uh, more of a more technical nature, then can I think with it? Can I explore it, add bits to it? So this understanding what, of what I'm reading is what comprehension is. And then, but it's more than, I think when we use the word comprehension, we don't really take into account everything that it is. It's really being able to mentally think with everything that we've just read. And if a lot of those words aren't making any sense, they're not making pictures on our thinking, we can't fully do that. The next part is being able to, of literacy, is being able to communicate it to another person, either verbally or in a written form. So I've told you how it can show up verbally, and we're gonna show how it can talk about how it can show up in other ways as well. So how does it read uh, show up in reading? I really think the first big clue here um, in general is this uh, a reluctance to want to read. So if a child is putting up sort of general delay tactics to read and they're saying things like, I don't want to, it's not fun, I don't like it, or I can't, I can't is the big red flag. They're actually telling us the truth. They're really struggling with it and it's usually because of these trigger words. So if there's a lot of resistance, that's usually a first big one. Um, the next step would really be if they, when they're reading, there's different ways it can show up. And again, this is a bit tricky to describe, so I'll do my best here. The first way it would show up is if somebody is reading very slowly, and they're obviously a year or two below their grade level. They're really taking their time to focus in on every single word and they're just struggling with it. And eventually, if you just uh, leave them reading out aloud long enough, what you'll find is, is they'll just misread one of these trigger words. They'll say uh, the instead of them. They'll say uh, when instead of what. And they'll just flip them around or they'll misread them completely. Sometimes kids, that if they read long enough, and they trigger enough, they'll just suddenly pop in a, a trigger word that isn't even there, like the word will be and, and they'll replace it with the. So they're substituting tr trigger words. Um, their mind doesn't know what an and is, so they just go, well, I don't know what an and is, I'll just throw out anything, this guy won't know. So, um, and it's, in some ways it's almost humorous when you begin to realize what's going on, but it isn't humorous for the person that's experiencing it, it's horribly confusing. So I don't mean to be glib or anything when I express it. I'm just sort of expressing the way it happened for me. So this very, very slow reading can happen. And if you just listen to them read long enough, out aloud, eventually they'll go on a trigger word. So if you're a parent watching this, you don't want to do this as a test. Just surreptitiously watch and 
get them to read out aloud, and then just underline the words they're making a slip up, or just write them down on a piece of paper. And what you'll realize is they are always these abstract abstract short connecting words you might find that every now and then they misread a word that phonetically doesn't play fair that isn't a trigger word but nine times out of ten it's going to be a trigger word so it happens with the slow reader and, and it's really obvious with the slow reader uh, the next way where it's not so obvious is with the very fast reader, somebody who is more been diagnosed with ADD or ADHD. They can read very slowly and struggle in the same way, but more often than not, they read very quickly. And it, I, it's almost like, like a machine gun that is like, boom, 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 that is every single word they're reading perfectly. And this is actually sort of deceptive for a parent or a teacher because when you say, can you read? The parent goes, yeah, you can. They're reading every single word. But if you leave them long enough in a paragraph, there may be 20 trigger words, but eventually they'll go on two or three. Um, this happened to me with a boy that I'm working with in a couple of weeks. A few months ago when I assessed him, we were reading out aloud and he was reading very quickly, then very slowly, then very quickly. When he realized what was going on, he really put the brakes on. It's like he was reading fast. And when he came to a trigger word, he'd slow down, make sure he'd get it correct, and then he'd keep going again. Um, that's the other way that it shows up. Um, but eventually, if I just let him read long enough, eventually he'd misread a trigger word. And I go, there it is. Now, a lot of ADD types um, or ADHD types, because they're constantly told, yes, you're doing very well, you can read the words, and because they can read every single word on its own, they are very often convinced that they can read fine and there isn't a problem with their reading. Well, technically, there isn't. You can read every word on the page, and that's what happened with this boy. And I was basically saying, sure, yeah, you're reading every single word on the page, you're reading it very slowly, or are you understanding it? When you get to the bottom of the page, do you could you understand what you've read or do you have to reread it? And he'd say, well, I might have to read it like maybe three, four times more. Usually, according to his mum, his mum was like, no, it's more like five or six times. Um, and I so we kept on going. And then eventually uh, he eventually sort of ground to a halt and realized what was going on. But and he was still very defensive. And this is why I said you want to go gentle when you're observing this in a kid particularly if they're on the ADHD side of things, because they very often get convinced that they can read because they can read every single word. But like this boy was, he was reading um, at grade five and he was in grade eight. And you need to be able to read at grade eight to be able to do grade eight work. If you're reading at grade five, yes, you're reading every single word at grade five. It's kind of strained, it's kind of forced. You're kind of really forcing yourself to concentrate at every, 10 or 15 words, you go on a trigger word. Now, there's a lot more trigger words on that page, however, but you are going. So eventually when he realized what grade level he was actually reading at, he was in grade eight, but he's actually reading at grade five, the sort of the penny dropped for him, and it was, I think, fairly embarrassing for him. And it took him for a while for him to admit that of himself, because, uh, and that sort of is another layer of problem that can happen. So it, kids can read very slowly and then eventually go on trigger words. They can read very quickly and then eventually go on trigger words. Where trigger words really show up for the ADHD type is where they can read every single word on the page, they get to the bottom, but they can't remember what they've read. So they have to go back and read it again and read it again. And three, four times later, they're still struggling with it. And that's often what used to happen with me. I'd read half a page and I'd go, where was I? I'd lost my place and I have to go back up to the beginning again. However, even then, sometimes people think they can read. Very often I'll meet uh, a kid or an adult who can read at grade level, even though it's slow, that's fine. I don't mind about speed, it's not a race. But what happens is getting their thoughts down on paper. So the last piece of literacy really is getting my ideas and my thoughts out of my head on a sheet of paper or on a computer screen and being able to write a coherent sentence without it being incredibly painful. And this is where very often the ADHD, the ADHD, pardon me, sorry, the ADHD type who looks like they can read at the beginning, at the front end, they've been diagnosed with a lot of hyperactivity and the reading is sort of going under the radar. They look like they can read, 
they can sort of think with it, but on the back end when they have to communicate it to somebody else, getting their thoughts down on paper, um, that's where it falls apart for them. Turning in their homework. Why are you always delaying? Why can't you get it done? So the literacy is the trigger words of getting them on the back end. And when that drops, then you'll, the penny drops for them there. Then they go, okay, now I get it. Now I understand why these trigger words are a problem. So it can show up in these four ways. It can show up in the reading where they'll make an obvious mistake and they'll invert misread words. It will show up in the, um, the writing when somebody's actually trying to write a sentence down or it will show up in the thinking processes of it where they're trying to communicate their idea to somebody else and it falls apart or when they're actually talking and you can hear the double tapping or the sentence just grinds to a halt. Um, the obvious way it shows up in spelling is a, you know, somebody's always asking to spell the same word. And my favorite example here is somebody saying, how do you spell the word enough? Is it E-N-U-F-F or single F? And it, it's not, it's, that's not how you spell the word enough. It doesn't play fair. So that can also show up in that way. So um, if you'd like to understand trigger words some more, and if you are sort of looking at your kid, trying to evaluate what's happening with them, are they tripping up on these trigger words? Is this a problem? There's a list of the trigger words in the book called The Gift of Dyslexia. But better still, if you'd like to continue this conversation with me, you're very welcome to. You can go to down to the description box below, and my website is overcomingdyslexia.ca. If you'd like to find the nearest facilitator to you, then you can go to the next listing, which is um, Davis International, and that's dyslexia.com, and you'll be able to go to find a provider there, and you'll be able to find a facilitator anywhere in the world. If you're interested in Davis Autism, then you can, there's a listing gonna be there, and there's also my Facebook and YouTube channel. Uh, gonna have lots of videos on the YouTube channel, so go, please go and like, share, subscribe, and, um, um, hopefully that's uh, helpful. So, um, bye for now, I think. See you in the next video.